It is His extreme grace and mercy and we are grateful that Allah Kareem with His special karam, with His mercy, special mercy and blessings has given us the tawfiq, the ability to implement a very great act of worship, a very great ibadah because the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah this is so necessary and is so important that Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah Alay stated that to do the dhikr of Allah is wajib. It is wajib. This is in his makhtubat, in his writings, that to do dhikr of Allah is wajib, compulsory compulsory so we are doing dhikr at this moment alhamdulillah and the thawab the reward that will be attained is on the level of wajib this is not some low level thawab and with regards to the importance of dhikr i would just like to discuss this together today with regards to remembering allah and the importance of this action that let's take the example of a house so we understand from the example inshallah in the house, there is a tank, a water tank. And the water tank supplies water to the different rooms in the house for drinking, for bathing, for cleaning. You know, we have a water tank normally in a high level position. We fill the tank up and then we utilize the water that falls. Uh, and when we open the taps, because the tank supplies the water through the pipes into the taps. And if we open the tap, on an occasion and dirty water comes out of the tap then whatever you my 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 I'm thinking that mashallah you will be paying attention to what I'm saying so I'd like to start again with that example so we understand it better so what I was saying to you was with regards to the importance of the dhikr al peace pay attention to what I'm saying so you can understand the point so the dhikr of Allah, I'm discussing the importance of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, my friends, not just for you, to you who is physically present, but at this moment, the women, the men, the sisters, brothers who are listening at this moment in time, and they're spending their time on the dhikr of Allah, and they have reduced their other, you can say, chores and pastimes, and they're sitting at this moment in the majlis of dhikr. So I'm presenting this discussion in their service, that we are not wasting our time, rather this is a great fadl of Allah at this moment in time, that Allah has given us an ibadah on the level of wajib, compulsory. And why is this ibadah, why is this action wajib? Why is it necessary? Why is the dhikr of Allah important? And for this reason, I'm giving you an example, so we understand why it's wajib. There's a water tank in our homes. And the water tank supplies the, the, the water to the different rooms, the toilet, bathroom, kitchen, wherever you have, a, say, a basin, etc. So when you open the tap for the water to run, then what happens is that maybe on an occasion, dirty water will come out. Now, it will be a bit surprising that dirty water is coming from all of the taps. So the person will think, ah, that the dirty water is not due to the taps individually because all of them have got dirty water coming out. So the source of the water, the source, which is the tank, that is where the water is defective. It will be dirty. So we will close the taps. We won't fix the taps or clean the taps or replace them. Rather, what will we do? We will go straight to the source to get the clean water. What we'll do, we'll clean the tank. We will clean the tank, purify the tank. Once we've purified the tank in a good way, it becomes nice and clean. 
Now, whenever whoever opens the tap, from wherever the person opens the tap, and the water will come out clean from the tap. So what we realize is that the tank is clean, and then every tap will emit clean and pure water. Understand? Very clear, simple point. There's nothing hard about this, is it? Technical to understand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the same thing. These are the words of the hadith. That in our body, there is an organ, a piece of flesh, which is called the heart or the qalb. The qalb. Similarity now to the water tank example, where there's contamination in the water tank, we clean it, pure water comes out. So there's a piece of flesh in the body, which is called the what? It is called the heart. The heart. The qalb. And who is telling us this? Who? Not some maulana, not some mufti sahib, not some scholar, not some research of this day and age. This is a Rabbul Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he delivered the message to the ummah. So listen carefully. It's an important message. This is not a message for today or from today. Or I'm saying this. Or it's my thinking. Oh, Hazrat Sahib's opinion. Or this Mawlana Sahib said this. Or Mufti Sahib said this. Who is saying this? Rabb is saying this. Rabb. Allah. And who is Allah? Who is the Rabb? Who created me and you? He gave us our stomach. Didn't he? He gave us our eyes. Yeah, he knows about the eye. Allah Ta'ala knows about the importance of the eyes. Allah knows about the importance of the hands. How important are the hands? Allah Ta'ala knows about the importance. Because Allah, the Creator, has manufactured the nose. What is the importance of the nose for a person, for a human being? So all of the parts of the body and the limbs that Allah Ta'ala has created, the, He is the Khaliq. And He knows that every part of the body, how important it is, how necessary are our parts of our body. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has not mentioned any of our parts of our body. Has Allah Ta'ala spoken about the kidneys? In the uh, this hadith, it's very important if the kidneys fail, you have to do dialysis. You can't stay alive. Has Allah Ta'ala mentioned any other part of the body? Has Allah Ta'ala mentioned the stomach here in this hadith? Is this hadith talking about the stomach, the importance of the stomach? Or the, the leg? No. Or the eyes? In the hadith, what we learn, now you think. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in your whole body, what have I manufactured? Listen carefully. What is that thing? The most important thing is what? Is the heart, is your heart. Now you can imagine that how important is the heart of a human being in everything. It's the most important piece of flesh and organ of the body. Why? Why is it the most important? It's explained here. Because if the heart is correct, if the heart is correct, then the whole body, our whole body will function correctly. If the heart is correct. And if our heart is contaminated, then our whole body will not function correctly. So this is very simple masla that we need to understand. If we don't understand, that's our choice. But if we don't understand, we won't understand the Qur'an. Until today we haven't understood uh, who Allah is. How can we blame them? But we say, where is Allah? Millions of people say, where is Allah? Millions, where is Allah? Where is the Rasul of Allah? We don't believe in this. There are many. Obviously it's this. But when Allah Ta'ala gives people shu'ur, understanding and aql, and Allah's grace and mercy falls on the person, then they understand. This is a clear point, isn't it? That if the tank is contaminated, and dirty. Then what will come out of all of the taps? Dirty water, contaminated water. What did we do then? We purified the tank. What comes out, uh, out the taps then? Clean water. This is what Allah Ta'ala is saying is that your heart, your hearts, if your heart is clean, and there is clean and purification, then whichever part of your body that you do amal from, Yes, in different parts of the body do different acts of worship. For example, for salah, use your hands, your forehead, your nose. We do this, don't we? Yeah. So Allah Ta'ala says, if your heart is correct, then whatever amal I've told you, the faraid, the, the, the compulsory sadaqat, the zakat, all the actions, whichever action you implement, the nur, the light will come into the action if your heart is correct. And it will become adheem about it. Just like if the water tank's clean, the water will be pure. So if your heart is clean, your deeds will be pure and good. But if the heart is contaminated and dirty, then none of our worship actions, whatever they are, will not be clean and pure. And if it's not clean and pure, then what will be obtained by doing those actions? Water is coming out. Can you have a, a bath? With the dirty water? Can you drink the dirty water? No. Can you clean your clothes with the dirty water? No. You can't. So Allah Ta'ala says that salah, prayer, that you are doing with a dirty heart. With a dirty your heart is not clean, it is not pure. And you are requesting du'as, you're praying salah, you're reciting Qur'an, you're reciting tilawa, whichever ibadah you're doing, and there will be contamination mixed in with your ibadah because your heart is not clean. It is not pure because your heart is dirty. It is impure. 
It's filled with the impurities. So it's stated, do islah of the qalb. We have to rectify the heart. If there is islah of the heart, then your amal will have islah. If your amal, amal has rectification and purity, then those deeds will be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So see how important. So here Hazrat Tanwi, rahmatullah, stated that don't consider dhikr as some insignificant action. Every human being, it is essential for him to do dhikr or her. In Islam, there are various subjects, branches of Islam, where people are working on that subject or branch of the deen. For example, in this house, there are various taps and pipes and water is being supplied to different rooms. In the same way, Islam has different subjects, different branches. And in every branch and subject, people are doing the work of the deen. We see that there's work of the deen going on, whatever's happening. But every subject and branch of the deen will be implemented purely and correctly if your heart is clean. For example, you are doing the work of the deen. You're propagating the deen. You're doing work with the Quran or the Hadith or you're doing tabliq. You're propagating doing da'wah. Allah Ta'ala puts people into different fields, fields or subjects and branches to promote the deen of Islam. But success in all of these fields and acceptance in all of these fields will only come when that amal is done with a pure heart. So it's lazim. It is essential for every individual, it is critical for every human being that he or she pays attention to his or her heart and does islah of the qalb. We cannot say tomorrow, Allah, I didn't know, I did so many actions, Allah, why are you not accepting them? Allah will say that you did not implement the actions with the purity of the heart that I asked you to. So is this something to understand here, brothers? There's nothing to debate, is it? It's a very logical, simple message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very simple. Easy and straightforward. So we, how can we be ghafil and negligent that we don't clean our heart? We don't purify it. Oh no, no, Allah Ta'ala will accept this. Okay, it's not important. I'm doing the amal, Allah said, isn't it? My heart's okay. I don't need to pay attention to that. No, this will not work. Who are we doing the actions for? Who are we presenting the deeds to? Who are we prostrating onto the ground for? And all of the results emanate from where? From the heart of the human being. And that's the reason why our ibadat, there are differences today. Our hajj and umrah, there's a difference. Everyone's doing the tawaf around the Kaaba. One person's tawaf is so fantastic that don't ask his levels high. Piety and the other poor soul, he doesn't know. He says, have I done tawaf or not? Did I finish it? He just went around, I'm free now, free. Okay, quickly, let's go. Sa'i, Safa, Marwa, let's finish. Shave the head, I've done umrah. Ah, yeah, yeah, let's go and eat and drink now. Quality. Quality can only come from the heart. Everyone standing in the front row praying salah, many people, every person's salah will be different. Why? Because the person whose heart is made, he has cleaned the heart, then his salah will become nur and will rise to the heavens for acceptance because he's trying. Because that person's trying. So we should be so grateful to Allah. That woman, that man, that sister, brother, that human being should be so grateful to Allah. Who That person who has the worry that I need to clean my heart. Very fortunate is that sister and brother, man or woman. They are selected by Allah. I tell you, they are selected. This is not some minor thing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He creates the awareness that... I need to do this action. I cannot be successful. It doesn't matter how many ibadat and worship actions I'm doing. I have to follow the method of the Quran and the Hadith, which is the tariqah of the Sahaba Ikram, the pious Sahaba, and our Aqabirin, our pious predecessors. Look, our pious predecessors, you will not see any one individual from our Aqabirin. Let's take Hazrat Shaykh al whoever, whichever field of Islam he was propagating, you will not see one of our pious predecessors who, ne- who didn't do Islam of the Qalb. Every one of them did. Every Everyone was on this line and properly on this line. Every one of them. They could not even imagine that they didn't do islah of their qalb, that they didn't purify their hearts. From our qabri, any field, any subject, any branch, whether it's tabliq, jamaat, whether it's the hadith teaching or tafasir, commentary teaching or fiqh, jurisprudence or anything, ifta, anything I'm talking about our qabri in that generation about which it has been written, Hazrat, uh, Mufti Shafi Sab Rahimahullah Ta'ala has written in his kitab that there was a generation when I used to study in the Darul Ulum he said in that generation from the top level to the highest from the mudarris from the principal to the chaprasi to the PA to the per- personal assistant the person who bring the water to the rooms every individual in that institution was a solid dhakir and a wali of Allah and a wali of Allah yeah and he said I saw this generation myself to the PA 
to the personal assistance of solid dhakir in the night when the sun would set in every corner of the institute we either had recitation of dhikr Allahu Allahu la ilaha illa Allah dhikr fikr of the heart cleanliness of the heart that's why today and those previous generations even decades ago is there not a difference in those days there was barakat blessings ronak light and today there's darkness and sadness is very sad today I'm sad that these two two such personalities have departed from this dunya that maybe you will have realized this but both have gone at the same time two great personalities one was as a Sheikh Uladis Samiullah Khan Sab from Karachi and great uh, Sufi and in ilm, he had a great uh, status, great personality. And the other person, who is a great personality, Alhamdulillah, Hazrat Shaykh Khulaf Ajab, uh, the Khalifa of Hazrat, Hazrat Abdul Hafiz Makki, Rahmatullah. So with both of them, I've had sobat and company. I remember today that time when Hazrat came to the Khanka, our Khanka. And Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, Allah gave me the opportunity that I sat with him and spoke with him. And I did some uh, discussion with him. And he had great akhlaq. Great uh, um, conduct and very gentle and caring. We couldn't realize he's such a great uh, sheikh and he came with such ease. And the madrasa was running in a khanq and somebody said that he's come to meet you. I said, who? And he said, Hazrat Abdul Hafiz Makki I said, he? He's come here? How comes? It was Asr time. We prayed Asr and we were sitting. The madrasa was running. And then I said, he's come. I said, please come upstairs. I went down to receive him. There was another brother with him. Another person, Mulana Sab, somebody with him. I said, Hazrat, how comes you've come here? And he said, no problem. He said, we were speaking. We used to meet each other in Umrah, in the Haram. And uh, we used to know each other. And he had a link with Hazrat. He was aware of Hazrat Sab. And he said, no, no, no. I've come here. I've visited. How can it be that I've come here and I don't meet you? I will definitely meet you. SubhanAllah, he came to meet me himself. MashaAllah, humble person. And we sat for a little while. We discussed, alhamdulillah. And in that, there was some beneficial talk. Very beneficial. And I presented this Muslim that people, they complain or criticize on dhikr, the dhikr we do, that we do jahir dhikr loud. And he said, this is bidah. People say, this is bidah. And he laughed. And he laughed and he said, what can we tell them? They don't even have knowledge. And uh, he gave a great answer. I don't want to give you the answer. Now, this is the first time that I'm mentioning Hazrat. So I don't want to mention that. So beautiful answer he gave to those people who criticize dhikr. And he, he gave the right answer with regards to the importance of doing dhikr. So he came and met me and said, me, great personality, great. And such a great, unique individual that when I used to go on Umrah, and his friends were there, his Jama and my uh, friends were with me, and I used to be very happy. And we wouldn't have much time, we were traveling, we were musafir at that time, and there's not much time, most time we would spend in the haram, or coming and going from the haram. And, uh, and mashallah, there would be a majlis of dhikr there, and he would uh, have that system running there in Makkah, and we would be busy, busy in our dhikr, and they, he would, and we would do salam with each other with Hazrat. When people would come there, his colleagues, they say, Where are you from? And I used to be happy. And then we'd ask them, Where are you coming from? They say, We're coming from Hazrat dhikr. So he had that environment of dhikr in Makkah to Al-Muqarramah. Alhamdulillah, I'm speaking about this. And such was his system. He was so fanafal in dhikr, Hazrat Makki Sab, Rahmatullah, Alhamdulillah, that if you read, write, uh, read his writing, Writings and read the things that he spoke about with regards to dhikr and the importance of dhikr. So my brothers, my friends, dhikr of Allah, now you're sat here and I am sat here. So this is an objective, we have an objective of sitting here. Allah Ta'ala has given thawab, there's no doubt, there's a great thawab of doing dhikr. But the maqsad, the objective of doing dhikr is very great indeed. When an individual human being does dhikr, ikhlas comes into his life, sincerity, humbleness, gentleness, and he starts to focus on his deeds, he starts to worry about his deeds. That is my salah, we used to pray salah before, but after doing dhikr, what happens is that you have fikr and worry for your salah. You start to worry about that you used to recite Quran before. But once you do dhikr and you're immersed in the dhikr and you're thinking and you're pondering and then your tilawat becomes high level, high quality. And the direction of your life starts to change. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala has put a cure in this. Allah Ta'ala has put a cure in this. So the objective isn't just, I'm sitting here, oh, it's just a pastime or a habit or I'm going to become a wali of Allah. No, this is not the reason that tomorrow on the day of judgment, look how people pass away. Very quickly, how many, how much those people have done? Today, we are proud of them, envious that he passed away in Makkah al Makarama and great janaza he must have had in Haram Sharif. His janaza will have been prayed. Imagine this. Imagine his janaza was in Haram, in the holy masjid, and how many people must have been praying the janaza and where he will have been buried in Makkah al Makarama. Tell me, 
how great and how lucky and fortunate his aunt in his departed dhikr, dhikr. He used to do the dhikr of Allah, teach the dhikr of Allah, and an abundance of ibadah, dhikr, dhikr. He had a khanka then, Makkah he used to do the dhikr of Allah, and he used to give khalafa to people. He used to give people permission, ijazah, to go and teach further, and he used to say this, that it's important. So we are wasting our lives. We know that we don't have the capability, we're not like that. But Allah Ta'ala has given us ibadah, we maybe don't have ilam knowledge, but any woman, man, if they start to do the dhikr of Allah, they will elevate themselves to the heights, to the heights. So don't consider that this is an extra extra action, voluntary action, only the walis of Allah, friends of Allah do dhikr. I've told you a hadith and an example today. That we need to understand our, and consider our bodies as a water tank. If we keep the water tank clean, then remember our ibadah, your ibadah will become A1 acceptable in the court of Allah. Otherwise not. Otherwise not. Dirty water nobody drinks. Dirty water nobody drinks. If you don't drink wo- dirty water from the tank, then how will Allah Ta'ala accept our dirty actions? Our impure actions due to the impure heart. So let's not be lazy. La talhukum. Allah Ta'ala says that in the Quran, clear, Allah Ta'ala doesn't like that there's a restriction due to amwalukum wa awladukum. Allah Ta'ala says, أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ I don't like at any time that there's a restriction coming in between you and my dhikr, Allah Ta'ala says. There should be no restriction hurdle. You should have so much fikr that nothing should be a restriction or a hurdle. Allah Ta'ala says, أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ And who's in أَوْلَادُكُمْ Everybody comes, isn't it? Relatives, relationships and, and أَمْوَالُكُمْ Is our work and our worldly goods and our business or employment Allah says nothing in the dunya should restrict you from doing dhikr Allah Ta'ala doesn't tell us to stop working Has Allah Ta'ala told us to stop working? No Allah is saying no work, business, transactions Do as much as you want But Allah says أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ لَا تَلُكُمْ That don't be ghafil, don't be negligent. Because when you become negligent, your tank becomes dirty, then all of your work of the deen will not reach to the acceptance mode. Allah says, I will not accept it. So here, there's a very vast message of the deen. If there's a sister making the chapati or the bread, do this, but do the dhikr at the same time. If you're cooking the food, the dish... Uh, then make, do the dhikr of Allah. If you sat with the children, do the dhikr of Allah. Do dhikr regularly. Don't be negligent from dhikr. And the tariq of dhikr, if your tongue, maybe your tongue's not moving, but your heart should be moving. You should have so much practice that your heart is doing dhikr of Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Maybe you're not feeling this. But if you practice something regularly, because the heart has been created for the dhikr of Allah, so it will do the dhikr of Allah. If Allah Ta'ala has made the heart for dhikr, so if we make it practice and we work on it, make effort on it, then will the heart not move? Will the heart not beat to the name of Allah? Of course it will. If you manufacture a car, construct a car, weld it, put it together, make it ready, and you bring it onto the road, will it drive or not? Of course it will definitely drive. That's the function and the objective of the car. So Allah Ta'ala said that I've mentioned one thing about your body. What part of that body is this? It's your heart. And when Allah Ta'ala says that if you do the dhikr of Allah, it's so important. So if we pay attention to our heart and do dhikr of Allah, will our heart not remember Allah? Of course it will. Knowingly, unknowingly. So Allah Ta'ala said that I've given you the heart, at least we should do this, that make it a habit, that morning and evening, what should we do? We should take the tasbih, the hasbih that you've been prescribed, thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, sit down, do that tasbih, then after that, your whole day, pay attention to your heart and your heart will move. It will be to the name of Allah. So this is proven here. That you are washing your heart, cleaning your heart, and the impurities are being clean. In the morning you've done dhikr, all of the impurities from the night to the morning have removed. And if you do dhikr in the night, then all of the impurities and the sins of the day are removed. Because mouth can come any time. And then we are prepared. And the ibadah we are doing, all of it will be pure and clean and will be accepted. It will go with us clean and pure. But who has time to this? We don't understand. We don't think it's important. We don't have akal. Someone says, I do dhikr for this reason. Someone says, I do dhikr for this reason. Oh, these are the people of dhikr. Who are the people of dhikr? The ahl of dhikr. Is there a jamaat of dhikr? Does this make sense? The dhikr jamaat? That, oh, what does this mean? The jamaat that does dhikr of Allah. That this is not some special select group of people. Everyone needs to do dhikr. The people of the masjid say, you can do dhikr or give the dawah for dhikr. And we all are collected and gathered and we're doing dhikr. And there's no jamaah here or congregation or special group or cult or sect. Have you filled in a form? An application form? Have you shown an ID? Dhikr ID? That this is the dhikr ID, the dhikr jamaah? No. Dhikr is a universal action for everybody. So you have listened to what is being said, you understand. And if you didn't understand before, then understand today. The sisters and brothers that dhikr is wajib. It is compulsory. And this is not some normal person saying this. Has a tanwi, rahmatullahi, supreme, supreme authority. And if something is wajib, can you leave it? Will you leave witr salah? Is witr wajib or not? I'm giving the example of salah. Otherwise, there are many other wajib actions. 
Many, so will it not be a sin if we leave witr? So if we leave a wajib, compulsory deen. So how can we leave dhikr? The people of the dunya are leaving dhikr. How can we leave dhikr and expect results, success? Five times if we can pray salah, then can we not do dhikr twice a day, five minutes? Think for a moment. Think, if we can pray salah five times a day, due to which the salah will be accepted, the dhikr of Allah will make the salah accepted. In other words, let's look in your house, you have 30 taps. What do we call them? The taps that run the water, allow the water to come out, flow out. How many? Let's say you've got 15 taps, you've got a big house. 15 different taps, you've got one water tank, and the tank will emanate the water, and you will have the trust that the water will come out of every tap, clean and pure. MashaAllah, you're praying nafal, tahajjud, and you're doing lots of ibadah and worship, and you've attached the taps to the tank. But have you ever gone to the source, the water tank, and cleaned it? Have we ever thought that the heart should be clean, so our amal can be clean and pure? Do you understand what I'm saying, or you still don't understand? How essential is the dhikr of Allah? If you're doing dhikr of Allah, so what should we do? What should we do? How grateful we should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we're not doing some extra action, that we're not becoming the big walis of Allah, this is the karam, the mercy of Allah, that our salah is being accepted. That if a tabligh jamaat brother is doing dhikr of Allah, his dawah, his work of propagation is pure and being accepted and is good quality. If the person teaching Quran, his Quran is being improved. The muhaddith, his hadith is being improved, his teachings improved, high quality. And if dhakir, he, when he does dhikr, considers that his amal is becoming good and correct. Any deed, if we do, any deed, and we do it in parallel with dhikr of Allah, it should be pure and clean, Allah will accept it. Allah will accept it. And if my whole life I do deeds, this wazifa, this dhikr, this practice, these deeds, all are dirty and pure, then will Allah accept them? So the most time, the sensible people, what do they do at home? They say that we need to be cautious and careful. We need to go and look at the source of the water. They put the medicine into the water. They disinfectant into the water to clean. Like for example, in Pakistan, Indian subcontinent, other countries, we have water tanks. Let's clean the tank so the water's pure, so we don't get a disease. Every other day they clean it, purify it. For example, if you a water tank at home, you know this. If so, the water, the dirty water, doesn't come. We're very cautious and careful. In the same way, the person who knows that I'm going to die, my salah, janaz is going to be prayed. I have to depart from it, going to the grave. He's worried that at least morning and evening, I have to do the dhikr of Allah. I need to prepare. I need to, my heart to be clean. And when that you have a tank, the heart is a water tank. When you clean the heart, look. Let me explain. When the heart becomes clean, then your ibadah becomes full of nur and light. This is one reward. And we, we need to keep the tank clean all the time, the heart clean all the time. So what happens is that when we clean the tank and it starts to glow and sparkle and shine, subhanAllah, and it's heart, it becomes such a thing that whatever in the dunya, the signs of Allah, the anwarat, the tajalliyat, the heart cl- clings onto those things in the dunya. But this is the effect of dhikr. The heart benefits. If you do dhikr morning and evening, you are cleaning the water tank, you're working hard. So you can make it more clean and more clean. And there's no limit to the cleanliness of the heart. The cleanliness of the heart, there's no limit because the heart is such a thing. The heart is such a container that only those things, so many things can come to the heart that we cannot imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the heart so great, it has the capacity to absorb great things. And that's why Allah ta'ala said, that clean the heart. And that's why Allah ta'ala says, do dhikr kafiran kafira. Do high amount of dhikr. Because the more you do dhikr, the more the heart is clean, then the effects of that dhikr will increase. The benefits of the dhikr will increase. And when the heart is so pure and clean, then the benefits of the heart will increase so much so that the tajalliyat of Allah Ta'ala will become visible the only Allah the karamat that they see see so for us if we do dhikr morning and evening our salah will be corrected and improved and our fast and if we do as much as we can kathir and kathira we do thousand two thousand three thousand in the morning evening wherever the majlis is we go and join in you'll become the wali of Allah You'll become the only Allah. And everything becomes from what? It emanates from the cleanliness of the heart. So we need to clean the heart. Yes, so we need to do tawbah and have the clean heart. Do you understand the point? So may Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Whenever there's an opportunity to do dhikr, we don't understand. Don't think it's a minor, insignificant. If we're not doing dhikr, then we should be sad on our loss. We should regret our loss. We've wasted our lives. We should ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah, please open the path for me. And then the Quran says, La tal hukum. That there should be no restriction in you doing dhikr from your awlad, from your business transaction. The whole dunya, Allah says, that from your work, Allah says, La, totally not. That Allah says it's important to do the purification of the heart. Allah says, don't leave this. This is your test. This is a test for you. 
Allah Akbar. Allah says, Ya ayyul adhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Subhanallah, this is a test and a challenge, the dunya. Allah says, O oh, you who have attained faith, O oh, believers, let not your worldly goods, your business, employment, work, or your children, family, relatives, make you oblivious of the remembrance of Allah. It is lazim, wajib to do dhikr, and you need to have the link with the shaykh, the teacher. You have to follow the system to learn dhikr. So what's the system to clean the heart, to purify the heart? For example, when we don't have time to to um, purify the tank, we assign the job to a company, a contractor. We say, can you come once a week, clean my water tank? The technician comes, you pay him, he comes every week, he puts the disinfectant, he cleans it with a proper procedure system. And here, to clean the tank of the heart, we are insane, human beings, we're lazy and negligent. So we should have a company and a technician, the, the, the specialist who cleans our heart, who rectifies our heart. And that is the wali of Allah, the sheikh. Register yourself with the sheikh, the wali of Allah, and say to him, I'm lazy, I'm negligent, I need to know, I want to make a connection with you. So the shaykh says, okay, you've got a connection with me, so I'll prescribe to you dhikr, such a dhikr that will never make you lazy, negligent. So it's lazim, the first step to purify the heart is to visit the technician, the specialist, the physician, mother, uh, a man or woman, brother or sister, you have to have the teaching from a shaykh. Strong connection with the shaykh. Strong connection. Doesn't matter how many whispers come, wasawis, because you'll get dhikr of Allah from the technician. Then the tariqah that the shaykh gives, that this is how you have to do dhikr, then be regular in this. Be regular and consistent. Don't leave your work, jobs, employment, business, earning money, dunya, relationships, society. But in parallel with this, keep your dhikr uh, running smoothly and regularly. When you know you're free, I've got a bit of time, there's a majlis, then get to that majlis. Reach to that masjid. This is the tariqah. Not, oh, I'm free, I'll stay at home. Oh, I did dhikr in the morning, I don't have to do it in the evening. No, then go again in the evening. You're sat. You're going to sit at home, chit chat, gossip. Look, Hazrat Sahib is doing dhikr, let me go there and sit there and do dhikr. Okay, and if it's very extremely, you can't come physically to the majlis, you can't come, then touch your phone, you've got the screen, press the play button on the screen and you will be joining into the majlis because we have the link online. So if you're late, you don't have a car, it's broken down or you're driving your taxi, you're busy and it's time for the, the majlis is running and you couldn't come today, you wanted to come, then go on to the link on your screen. What's that link? Uh, Sufi.org.uk and press play. On the screen, go onto the website, a link, and you will hear this. Ajis humble servant, Hasbunullah wa nimal ukeel. And all the brothers and sisters are there, joining and doing dhikr of Allah. Allah Ta'ala is prepared. Prepared. And then Allah will ask that you are so foolish. You had all of the resources and you still couldn't do dhikr. You are at home drinking tea. You couldn't, sat, you couldn't come to the majlis physically. Then go onto your phone, go onto that site, go to the link, press play and listen to the dhikr. Join in with the dhikr. You would have got the same reward for the majlis. So easy in this day and age, Allah Ta'ala has made this for us. And this dhikr, to learn this dhikr. Let's just think here. The 809 years ago, let's rewind to the days of our pious predecessors. They would walk thousands of miles travel to go and join in the majlis of the wali of Allah and do dhikr of Allah. Today Allah Ta'ala is allowing us to join in the majlis of dhikr through the phone, through online. And ask the scholars, the maulanas, look at the history of our pious predecessors. Read how they struggled, where did they find their shaykh and how they sought a teacher, guide to learn dhikr. I'll give you an example. Hazrat Haji Amdadullah Muhajir Makki Rahmatullah He said that I was seeking a shaykh, a teacher that day and age. I'm going back a century. He said from about my city, DG Khan, where I lived, he, and this is where he traveled to. From all four sides, Dera Ghazi Khan is surrounded by water. Rivers, it's hard to find it. And at that time in DG Khan, at the time of Hazrat Haji Sab, there was the great shaykh of the Chishti order, Tonsa. And even today is a great uh, um, school. And the great sheikh of the Chishti family would sit there. And from India, Saharanpur, Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Mahajir Makir, Amda said, I saw in a dream, I did tasawwur, that my sheikh is there. Tell me how he did he travel there. From Saharanpur to DG Khan, did he go there to make money, to sell goods? He went to learn the name of Allah so I can clean my heart, he said. And this is his history, I'm telling you. Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Mahajir Makir, Alhamdulillah. If you heard his name, he didn't just become a wali of Allah without struggling or striving, just came and sat down. How did he rectify the people? He said, I went there, I traveled there. How many months it must have taken? And through illness and struggling and exhaustion. He said, when I arrived there and I met that sheikh who was there, the Chishti teacher from the Chishti series, the order of Zikr, and he was, and he saw me and, and the teacher said that you've come to me, alhamdulillah, but the reality is I'm not your teacher. That vision you saw, that vision or dream, there's another place you need to go there. Nur, Nur Muhammad Sahib, go to him and take his sobat, his company. 
Subhanallah. Then he said, thank you, Jazakallah. Otherwise he could have received all of the faith from there. But the shaykh said, this is not me. I'm not your teacher. This is Mujahida. You need to travel to another place. Now we do dhikr. Notifications being sent out. Message. And we can link up via the phone or on our computers. And the masjid there, we've got cars, we've got iman, money, uh, pockets full of money. We have food at home. All the resources, but we don't want to do dhikr. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Will there not be difference in the, in the difference in the akhirah between our deeds and their deeds, our pious predecessors? Of course there will be. Should we leave dhikr? Of course not. Put up your hands if you're not going to leave dhikr. If you don't want to leave dhikr. Ah, good. MashaAllah. Never leave dhikr of Allah. Never leave dhikr. Brothers, this is not some choice, some optional voluntary thing we're doing. This is necessary critical Islam. It is ibadah. It is worship. It is that ibadah that must be done by every Muslim. We need a shaykh, a teacher, learn from the teacher. Like a person as a teacher in the world, same way, same method. So what's the restriction? Are you stopping work? Or is some hardship coming in your life? Nothing. Allah's given a system, Allah becomes pleased with us that he's making effort. She's making effort. When you start doing dhikr, you've understood. So all the wasail, Allah has given us the resources that we can learn dhikr so easily today. So we, what do we need to do? Have a bit of courage, determination. We need to think that the greatest thing, benefit for the akhirah. Because when the janazah is prayed in the masjid, then we should understand that maybe it's my janazah. Today we, we prayed janazah salah, didn't we? That brother who passed away. We prayed janazah salah. Janazahs happen all the time. And our death will also come. Our turn will also come. Are we not going to lie down in the grave? And we also, people are going to wipe their hands on our coffin and they're going to put our coffin into the, into the grave. Like this brother whose father died, he used to come and meet us regularly. People, they just disappear. Like this, look, you're sat here, tomorrow gone. Here today, go tomorrow. Oh, he died, he had a heart attack. That's what happened. Has a maki sab, rahmatullahi, great personality. What happened? Oh, he had a heart attack, he passed away. So can we realize? Suddenly the jolt will come, the shaykh will come, we'll go. So brothers, why do we waste our lives? From today, make a true promise, solid. Allah, I'm going to grab hold of your dhikr. And the rest, you know my needs and my problems and what I can do, my work and my issues. But from today... I'm going to make a promise, Allah, my faraid. Let's just do this much. This one is, I can't pray tajud Allah, fine, no problem. I can't pray shirak, no problem. I can't pray chas, no problem. No problem, Allah will not say anything. Don't need to do long recitations, no problem. Bas, one thing, five times salah, solid, your five times salah per day, and the dhikr of Allah, grab hold of this, finish, end of story, success upon success, and Allah spread the dhikr of Allah. How can we leave this? Allah spread it around the world, in the corners of the globe, Allah has given His dhikr. Has He not? Today here, tomorrow in Makkah, in Makkah, everywhere Allah Ta'ala spread out the Mashaykh. And fortunate are the people of Bolton, rather the whole of UK. The whole of UK, Alhamdulillah, we see, I saw this in the morning. One hour we do dhikr of Allah, 300 brothers and sisters listen to the dhikr in the morning. How many? 300. Subhanallah. How fortunate men and women they must be. Fajr after Fajr, they sit till Ishraq, the sunrise and do dhikr of Allah. And Allah Ta'ala, we don't have tawfiq, I'm driving the taxi and we can't sit in the morning. Then at least if I'm driving there, at least put on, uh, go to the link, the website, and press play on the link, so you can join into the majlis. So will we be joining in? Yes, inshallah. That's it. We have a telephone. That's it. Go to the link on the screen, press play button, and you're joining in. The, the noor is coming, the fez is coming, the angels are recording your name, that you're joining in the majlis of dhikr, and you're working, and the phone is on. Okay, if you feel sleepy, you're lying down, then press play on your telephone screen, or on your computer. Allah Ta'ala says, the alladheena yadhkuruna al aqiyam wa quudum wa la junubihim lie down and do dhikr if the quran is saying then why do you feel hurt if you're lying down you're exhausted you're tired okay lie down and do dhikr okay lie down allah ta'ala says remember me lie down after fajr lie down sleep uh, but press play on your phone screen and start listening join into the majlis gathering and inshallah while you're doing dhikr you'll maybe doze off or feel a bit sleepy and you'll do dhikr at the same time that's why allah ta'ala said they have made these systems in the world today are given technology that not one minute of the people's lives should be wasted. Allah has given us a phone, iPhone, Samsung, Allah knows best. What companies, what phones have come? Allah knows. Allah has given us the chip, everything, money. And we all have to do is press the button. Sufi.org.uk Allah has given, just press the play button. Hasbun Allah wa Morning at Fajr time, evening, night time. Every moment. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kudum la Those kalimats, versus those kalimats, that that the prophets anbiya alayhi musalam prayed la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum nadir where was this pre- uh, recited this kalama in the stomach that allah ta'ala took him out of that prophet out of all of the darkness allah ta'ala says that when you recite the kalama then if you recite it properly allah says i take you out of the darkness 
from all of the darkness are removed the veils. Look, what a great kalma this is. And from the darkness to the light, mina dhulumati la nur. When a person is stuck in the darkness of sins, this kalma has a Yunus alayhi salam. He was in the darkness, in the stomach of the whale, in the depths of the ocean, in the darkness, and, and he was in the stomach of that whale. And what did he do? Allah, he recited, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum nidalamin. Allah Ta'ala removed the darkness, he came out of the stomach, he came out of the darkness of the ocean, out of the depths of the seas, and he came out of that trap. Subhanallah. We recite this, Allah Ta'ala says, read. Allah Ta'ala seal this in the Quran. Whoever recites this, Allah Ta'ala says, I will take you out. I will pummel you out, out of the darkness into the light and the nur of the deen. Should we not do dhikr? Should we not listen to dhikr? Is this a mind action? Ya hayyu, ya qayyum. Allahu Akbar. Great kalama, we cannot imagine. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Imagine, think, how powerful is this kalama? We, we think about the hereafter, I swear by Allah, the mu'min, what should he be doing? Totally, he is not in any way poor or distressed. Those people of these kalamats and they recite them, I say, there's no greater individual than this. No jinn, no poverty, hunger, distress can afflict that person if he's reciting the dhikr of Allah. If he's reading, or if he's being told to recite, all the time he's doing dhikr of Allah. So will we recite? Inshallah. Listen. Listen, someone says, oh, I'm going to Pakistan. I said, if you're going to Pakistan, then you can also connect to the dhikr of Allah. Don't be negligent, lazy from the dhikr. Allah Ta'ala is prepared. These same kalamas, listen to that over there. Subhanallah. If you have shock, he said, I have a desire. He said, I won't just listen. Must give me a jazz of permission. When your dhikr is live, I will see the people that say, I said, Shabash, good boy. Mashallah, well done. Great thing, great thing. Anyone who goes, if you're going to Africa, I'm going to Africa. I can show you now. The call came from Africa. Sisters, they said that Hazrat Sahab, we enjoy dhikr and one day if they miss dhikr, then calls come from all around the dunya. Well, and I'm surprised, what did they say? That you're not doing dhikr today, why didn't you do dhikr today? What can we do now? What can we do? That one day they feel it becomes a khwarak of the food. I say, I can't give you the answer for this. How can I reply? What can we do? Maybe due to ill health or something, if dhikr is not done, they're asking questions. Why is dhikr not happening today? We become used to dhikr of, uh, doing the remembrance of Allah. So today, this shaksid, great personality has left this world. Hazrat Abdul Hafiz Makki, rahmatullahi may Allah ta'ala shower his mercies onto him. He was a dhakir. And I've met him, I know. He was a dhakir. From Makkah, the dhakir of Makkah. So when I used to have a khanka that was running, the system of dhikr, what status Allah gave him, what status, so rutba, imagine, think about this, great maqam, great maqam. So brothers, my friends, as I wanted to say, that Allah Ta'ala, may, be, may Allah give me the connection with this dhikr, and all of us, we are just running around in the dunya, I say, even if we have nothing else to our deeds, praise five times salah farad, regularly without fail and take the dhikr of Allah and whatever service of the deen you can do, do it and you'll have success upon success. Don't leave dhikr of Allah. That's it. Take hold of the dhikr of Allah. Don't leave it. May Allah Ta'ala give us all istiqamat and steadfastness. Ameen.